If you like what you hear, please take time to review us on Apple Podcasts and make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss an episode. Also, if you'd like to be on the podcast, let us know, or if you have someone you would like us to feature, let us know that as well. Welcome to Real Time Real Estate with Sandra King, Casey Lyons, and today we have Steve Manionis, owner of Victory Motors, and we have up there in <laughs> outer space, we have Mark Carlson, the production manager with uh, Crow Heart Energy, and they're both Moffat County High School boys basketball coaches. That's why we have them here today. So welcome, you guys. It's good to be here. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. So um, one thing I was thinking about is you have a really great connection with a bunch of Broncos, and you're really good friends with Rick Upchurch and things. What is your thoughts on the season? Uh, they're looking forward to next year. <laughs> <laughs> right? If we don't lose Sanders. Well. <laughs> So, yeah, it's... Uh, I mean, it's just kind of a train wreck, right? It's it's a first-year coach. I hope I'm not jinxing ourselves here, Mark, but <laughs> first, <laughs> we, we have better pieces to the puzzle than the Broncos. First-year coach, you know, new system, some holes in the offensive line, uh, just trying to piece things together, quarterback issues, obviously. Right. Uh, the things that give coaches gray hair. Gotcha. You know, well, so. I'm a big Huskers fan, Nebraska Huskers, and Scott Frost is kind of struggling with the same thing. And yeah. so I figure it's just sort of that. But So I, you weren't happy about the CU Nebraska game is what you're trying to say. I'm sorry. I see your lips moving, but there's no sound coming out. <laughs> there must be a problem. <laughs> it was really rough. It's just been, oh, God, last week was rough, too. It's yeah. just been, it's been a little bit of a challenge, but... There's a famous college coach one time that said, when you put your career in the hands of 18 and 19 year olds, your career isn't very long. So <laughs> that's true. I think that sums it up. <laughs> that's true. That's true. That's true. Did you have a good weekend? Had a great weekend. Yeah. Oh. So got to watch our Bulldogs win a game. My son's playing up oh, there. Nice. And um, we had a, our coaches are getting together. So we're hard at it. We've been going. <laughs> full throttle for a while now so oh, we're good. excited good that's a good weekend what'd you do this weekend i bet you can guess you worked oh no you moved yes. cows I and moved worked. cows worked and yeah. hunters again oh, yeah oh, oh hunters. yeah that's yeah. right oh my again. gosh you guys okay so i had uh, a hunter from texas almost mow me down right in front of j-dubs uh friday and Sari Cobb and her daughter Morgan were in the vehicle in front of me and realized it was me and thought that the guy was literally gonna mow me down and then he was laughing about it. So he said, did you know him? And I said, no, I had no idea. He was laughing. He seriously was coming into the side of the Jeep, just diagonally across, not paying any attention. And I'm trying to jump up on the uh, sidewalk in front of J-Dubs to avoid. I had nowhere to go. I'm laying on my horn. And then finally, at the last second, he was like, oh, and goes then around to make the next corner. And I'm like, OK, really? I've reached my limit. Worst feeling in the world. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Scary. Welcome so. to Craig, Texas, right? Right. right. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Mark, what'd you do this weekend? Uh, watched some high school volleyball. Cool. Uh, a, um, they had a doubleheader on Saturday. Went up and watched that. Uh, some college football. Um, I'm a Texas Longhorn fan, and they oh. barely, squeak, barely squeaked one out. Um, and then we had a coach's dinner with Steve. Uh, at his house. Oh, nice. Uh, his wife, yeah. Teresa, made an awesome meal, and, and we sat down and just talked about the upcoming season. Very good. Uh, good little powwow. And yeah. Teresa's a really good cook. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. She is fantastic. a great cook. So he did none of it. Yeah. <laughs> but he's right. <laughs> <laughs> he's exactly right. No, it's fun. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> That's good. That's good. <laughs> So kind of tell us a little bit about your your journey in life as far as just a shortened version is how you got here, you know, what you went to school here, of course, did mm -hmm. you go to college, things like that. So kind of start, your dad is an immigrant from Greece, yeah. who we love your dad, and then you were born here. You want me to start 100 years ago? Is yes, 100 start? years wow. ago. And now, really <laughs> quick though, let me jump in, your, Steve Raftopoulos and I were talking this the other day about... The ancient Greek language is is basically now a lost art. But do you, yeah. is your dad still, is that what he, 
can read is the ancient Greek or is that the modern? No, Greek? Modern. it's modern Greek. Okay, because I know he was translating those letters. Still struggles a little bit even with that being away from it yeah, so long. But you don't uh, practice it. The the dialect is definitely different. So and so he doesn't sure. remember any of it either. The mm-hmm. ancient Greek. Gosh, yeah, that's it's such kind a of lost. Bummer. Yeah. Yeah. So, but yeah, born and raised here, cool. and uh, graduate of Moffat County High School, which right is cool. On. Yeah. And. Uh, Let's see, 1979, I had to think about when I graduated. So um, four great years as a varsity basketball player under Craig Mortensen. Oh, yeah, okay. And so we had some great teams back then. Uh, I'll let Mr. Braggart talk about state championships later. <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't quite get to that point. Was proud to be on a team that we went 21-0 through the season and then stumbled in the playoffs oh, as a it. number one ranked team. And so... Uh, bittersweet memories for sure and then from there went on and went to Colorado State nice um, did you play and, basketball and there I walked on and made the team there played cool. there Sweet. that's great uh, for two and a half years I played there and then there was a coaching change that took place and we didn't really see eye to eye mm-hmm. along with 13 other players that transferred out mm-hmm. that year so mm-hmm. it was a tough year mm-hmm. and I finished at Shadron State oh, so, okay uh, Shadron Eagle with uh, Bob Davis was the coach. He was an assistant at Colorado State. He mm-hmm. called and tracked me down and offered me a scholarship. Sweet. And so I arrived at Shadron. It was like 1982, Christmas, in the dead of winter. And I'll never forget in pulling Nebraska. up. And there's <laughs> 9 million feet in Shadron, Nebraska. 9 million feet of snow. <laughs> and I walked into the dorm, and there were just piles of sleeping bags with like five or six people under them. There was frost on the TV. And my exact thought was, what the heck am I doing here? (laughs) (laughs) But um, it was, it was a great education and uh, we, we had some great teams there. And so it was a good finish to my college career. So very good. Went out to California, worked for General Motors. And uh, I played in the Lakers summer pro-am series for four years. Oh, wow. So that was fun to go that. out That's and awesome. find out what real basketball is really like at that level and uh-huh. be completely intimidated by some unbelievable athletes. But to be able to go out and compete, that was cool. Oh, yeah. Came back to Colorado and then moving fast forward, 1990 came back. I coached with uh, JL Jim Lochran yeah. as an assistant coach through the mm-hmm. 90s. Uh, then with Blaine Corlett as an assistant. And then I was a head coach for three years. Had some really great teams through that run. Um, some administration change. Decided it was time for me to step away for differences of opinion. Mm-hmm. Uh, stayed connected with AAU basketball, the youth program. Been mm-hmm. involved with that uh, clear up through last year. And uh, now excited to be the head coach again and awesome. see where we go. That sounds awesome. So Cool. So, Mark, give us the rundown with you as well. Uh, I was born in Rainsley. Um, moved, to, moved to Bags when I was uh, 12, uh, I guess. Uh, finished out, um, as my 12-year-old says, um, at the River Snakes, because he can't ever get it right. The oh, that's cute. Yeah, river. Yep, yep. Um, so, he, so he just calls them the r- River Snakes. Uh, but uh, like had, a, had an awesome four-year career, played for a Hall of Fame basketball coach, uh, Ed Reed. Um, in Wyoming. In Wyoming, yeah. yep, for bags. Uh, he uh, had, you know, ridiculous record, um, awesome teams, six state titles. Mm-hmm. Um, I was lucky enough to be a part of one of those. Um, we went 24-1. and one. Uh, You know, had, had tons of opportunities to play college basketball. Um, realized pretty quickly that uh, I wasn't mature enough to um, go to college. Uh, went to work for my dad in the oil field and have been here ever since. Um, That's I moved awesome. to Craig in 2001 and uh, started, I got in with Steve. I met Steve actually when I was a freshman at high school um, when he was the JB coach at Craig. Uh, we played him in a tournament and I got to know him a little bit through that. So when I moved back to Craig, kind of reconnected. Um, he got me in coaching AU basketball in 2002. 
and uh, I've coached every year since. That's awesome. Um, I did a stint at the high school 2014, 2013 to 2015 uh, with coach or with Eric Hamilton. Oh, I, um, I forgot about Eric. Yeah. We won two district championships. Uh, won a regional championship. Took a team to state. Placed Man. sixth at state. Um, really good group of right, kids. Mr. Bragger there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> pre- pretty awesome. Um, stepped away for a little bit. Continued to coach the AAU uh, last year. Um, I coached with Steve uh, in the junior high. He coached the eighth grade. I coached the seventh grade. Gotcha. Um, the opportunity came up when he got the head coaching job, and I'm excited to be back. That's awesome. We're excited you guys are back. It's like the dream team. Well, what kind little of little tidbit? He talked about district championships. We were showing the kid the ban the kids the banner hanging in the gym. Uh-huh. Was it Mark the last three, last four, last four, four district championships? We were coaches on all four teams. That's awesome. That's really Congratulations. Cool. I'm pretty proud of that. Yeah, for sure. That is so. really cool. Very good. So what mm-hmm. what kind of made you decide now is the right time to come back into it? I tell people I, I've really never left, you know, um, and being involved with the youth program and then, like he said, with the junior high program, it's always been a passion. I love, as Mark, just helping kids. Right. You know, building young leaders, as we like to say. Right. And when the opportunity came to interview again, sat down and kind of pondered it. People may think it's because I have a son in the program, but it's far more than that because I felt like I still have a lot to offer the program. Mm -hmm. And I want it to be a long-term commitment to where we build this thing and and try to do what Mark did up at Snake River, win championships, state championships, because it's never been done in Moffat County yet. There's never been a boys basketball state championship won or girls. And... uh, I'm at a point in my life where there's the balance where we can really yes. commit to it and do the yeah. things to, to really commit to a program and build it the way that I know it needs to be built. So, right. Very good. Um, that's why I stepped forward. Cool. That's I appreciate good. that. Yeah, Thanks. for sure. Yeah. It's really exciting when I was visiting with you guys the other day, mm-hmm. you and Mark, about the just things that you have planned for the program and just to get the kids back interested again in, in life and school and being part of a team. Just and, yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. You know, building that balance, Sandra, like you're talking about, of education and athletics. Mm-hmm. And then having kids being excited about the opportunity co- to compete. So we'll start November 18th with uh, our first official day of practice. And all indications right now tell us we're going to have roughly 45 kids step on the floor to try out. Wow. That's so, amazing. That's a lot of that's a lot of kids. So yeah. we're humbled by that 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 we're able to. And you didn't to, think you know, that was going to happen there a while back when you and I were visiting about it. You know, you, you weren't sure. sure. You, yeah. If, if you can get twenty eight, that's a solid number uh, for three teams. Are are I hate the word C team, but that's what they call it. Okay. I like so developmental. I don't know basketball, so C team is like the junior varsity. Freshman. Oh, freshmen. Okay. Yeah, a lot of our freshmen will be there. Maybe some sophomores that we feel need a little bit more time at that level to develop. Gotcha. And then you have your junior varsity, okay. which is, it could be freshman, sophomore, junior. Right. And then the varsity program, right. which could be a mix of any of the four. Uh, I think our program is strong enough now that they'll be hard pressed for a freshman to step up and get on the floor with our varsity program right now. But that's, yeah. I think, the kind of strength that you want in a program, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, that you have great athletes at every level. Right. And um, it, it's a progress because if you're putting a lot of freshmen on the floor, maybe it speaks a little bit to what have we done to develop kids as mm-hmm. juniors and seniors that they're mm-hmm. not ready to compete. I, I'll always take a young freshman that is that talented. Oh, yeah. But uh, our program this year? We're pretty solid on the top side with some kids, so we're excited about what we have. That's great. That's great. And they're all excited, obviously, if there's 45 of them. They're looking forward yeah, to I hope so. Yeah. I mean, they, they've they been showing up. We do 6 a.m. shoot-arounds now. We've been doing it for a month. <laughs> I, We've actually been going. <laughs> I admire years. for people at 6 a.m. to be able to function anything, so uh, that's awesome. I didn't say function. I said we show up. 
<laughs> you know, and the numbers go up and down because it is, and especially teenagers to get out of bed right. at 6 a.m. Oh, yeah. Uh, but we had 12 on the floor this morning. That's so great. that's the largest we've had in the mornings yet, but it, it speaks to the There's excitement some commitment. starting to build. Mm-hmm. So. There's some commitment, yeah. Very cool. Mark, do you have anything you want to add? It's so weird to have a not have the second person here. Not that we've had two people. This is the first one we've had two people on, but one of them's on the phone by the <laughs> microphone, and the other's so sitting here. This. So it's like, Mark, do you have anything to add? <laughs> no, the, the biggest thing is just you know trying to build some excitement back in in Moffat County. Um, you know, it, it uh, get some people in the stands, get some. You yeah. know, I, I tell yeah. this story, it just happened uh, recently. Um, you know, I was telling Steve about it the other day. Um, growing up in Bags, you know, there's a huge community um, involvement in everything that they do. Um, you know, uh, I used to say that there was, you know, more more fans that would go to a, a sixth grade girls basketball game in, in Bags than a varsity boys basketball game in Craig. Um when we were winning, when I coached up there before, you know, we had some pretty full stands. It was pretty awesome. And it definitely yeah. impacts the kids, you know, yep. makes it, makes them want to work harder. And the younger play, generation. You know, right. Oh yeah. Something to be excited about. Right. Um, well, I know when you we, coached Parker and we played up there and he was a little kid, um, there was a ton of people in the stands up there. Gosh, I don't remember yeah, what year that was, but it's, 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 it's dwindled, to, you know, and, and I, I contribute some of it to the, the phones and, and yeah. you know, mm-hmm. so, you know that that kind of thing, technology stuff like that. But um, the other day, Bags played in the third and fourth grade Doak Walker team mm-hmm. uh, in the championship down at the, the high school in Craig, mm-hmm. um, and uh, they brought two bus loads full of high school kids. Wow! Uh, down to cheer on the third and fourth grade football team. That's awesome. Um, the high school football players wore jerseys, uh, their football jerseys. The, the volleyball players, you know, made signs for the kids. They they had a big tunnel for them to run out. Um, oh, that's my cool. God. That almost makes me and, tear up for some reason. Cool, huh? That's awesome. That and yeah. and, and that, that sense of community is what, you know, me and Steve talked about uh, when we talked about doing this together. Um, you know, getting the program, all of the programs at Moff County, you know, the football Football team's doing a good job of that right now. Um, the volleyball team's, you know, building that. Um, I think all the coaches have, have kind of, you know, talked. They're starting to get on, on the same pages and, and just, you know, it, it'd be awesome to, to fill fill the stands and get that, that community back up there. Yeah. Get that right. pride. The I've been pride. saying that. Yeah. I've been yeah. saying that the last six months. We need our pride back yeah. in this county on yeah. everything. Yeah. yeah. We need yeah. our pride back. and. Well, and it's a two-way street for us. What we're trying to teach is, um, the program is really what is it? It's about building young leaders. Yep. And we want these kids to understand the importance of making smart choices. Yep. Getting the education. Right. Hard work pays off. Doing that hard work. And I'm not saying they haven't, okay, but we think there's another level that we need right. to go to to get this program back to the elite levels that it was at when Eric and Mark had those solid teams earlier right. on. Um, and you go through cycles. There's no two ways about it. But we feel like with what we can do in building depth in the program, involvement with the young kids, mm-hmm. you can you can level that bell curve out to make it a more consistent program. I think mm-hmm. is the way we want to put it. But you know, when we're talking about making the smart choices in classes, uh, when I interviewed, I said I asked some teachers. I said, "Tell me the reputation of Moff County basketball," and they said, "Smart Alex." disrespectful Mm. and that's not a knock on the kids but it's a knock on the kids in the program and and I take that personally and and we've seen tremendous strides already this year again where they're paying attention they're making the right choices Uh, and let's face it there's enough distractions out there for kids today uh, and enough ugly hands reaching out so if we can get them active in the community the right way right the community the community supporting these kids it's it's a I think it uh, it benefits both sides because right. that community pride. So we got some things down the road that we're going to do that I'm excited about. So. That's good. Well, and just having that relationship too with the coach. I remember you know back when I was in school that those kids that played on teams they had this you know relationship almost parental with their coach, 
and that was just priceless. Mm-hmm. And yeah. so getting that, you know, where they're looking up to you guys and thinking, gosh, this is what they want me to do is what I want to do. I want to make them happy. I want to be the best person yeah. they know that I can be. And, you know, and we're excited about that because you are exactly right is, is having that player coach relationship that goes beyond just barking orders on the floor. Right. Mark does yeah. a great job of that. I'm excited. We're bringing along Stefan Ridgeway um, oh, yeah. as our freshman coach. He's he's young in the coaching ranks, but he worked hard all summer long and really just sat back and listened to the direction we're trying to take the program. Mm-hmm. So we're excited for him. And then I'm, I'm excited. We also hired Thomas Noble. Oh, um, yeah. Thomas played for me That's when we right. won our last uh, uh, good run where we went Elite Eight in mm-hmm. the state playoffs. Mm-hmm. Um Great story about Thomas. You know, he's tall like me, uh-huh. and we yeah. were in um, <laughs> we were in Golden, four A versus where we are now, and he stepped up to the free throw line to shoot a free throw, and the student body, which was about I don't know eight hundred kids sitting over there, started chanting Bilbo Baggins. So his nickname is Bilbo with me now because it was so. And I just had to look at the kids. And go, now that's that's pretty good. That that was a good one by their student body. So okay. okay so what does that mean? I don't. Bilbo Baggins is a Hobbit character from, oh, from the Hobbit okay. series. Oh, okay. <laughs> I should I should explain that because not everybody probably knows. But yeah, um, that's cute. And it was just hilarious. But and he probably made the free throw. He did. He yeah. looked over him and just shook his head. Yeah. And, Hi. <laughs> and it was good. You know, some yeah. good memories yeah. like that. And it's good yeah. to bring Thomas and along. And he played ball in college, right? No, he Am did I not. Rem- he wanted to maybe yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah. He, he went on, um, where did he go? Northern Colorado. Yeah. And then came back, works for the city now. Right, yeah. And uh, Stefan works for the high school. Right, so good deal. We, we've got a good staff. I'm excited about it. That's good. A couple of positive guys, you know, as far as overcoming yeah. adversity and, and knowing that there's a better plan yeah, out yeah. there. And yeah, that's awesome. I so, think that fits in. It's like, it really is a dream team, you know. You're getting... We've got a good staff. Yeah, you, you really know? do. And we've got kids that are excited, so that's a pretty good combination coming that's out of good. the game. That's good. That's good. Because I think there's a lot of uh, teachers and, and upper administration that are really positive and forward-thinking, too. Love our, our athletic director. So. Bobby Howard does a great job. Uh, he's been very helpful getting us started. And, of course, Sarah is doing a great job as the principal of the school. So Right. Administration-wise, I think the vision is shared. Which is important, right? Um, mm-hmm. Didn't they exactly respect have you that and, before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, well, and, and it's people. I I don't know the athletic director, but Sarah Hepworth, of course, has been here a long time. Mm-hmm. So you feel like you have some stability there. Yeah, you know, you know, she's working hard, getting established mm-hmm. in her first year as the principal. Mm-hmm. Um, not that she hadn't been around, right? And she was the know. principal for East. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Um, I've always had, always like I've been around twenty years, right? Mm-hmm. But uh, she's been very supportive, mm-hmm. and I, I love the open lines of communication. That's important. Um, so, yeah, it's it's a good good combination that we have going on at the school right now for That's everybody. Good. That's good. So, what do you think? And speaking to that, Sandra. Oh, uh, yes. the, you Mark, know, the, you're here. When when I coached up there before, um, I think we in the three years that I coached, we had three different ADs and two different principals. Oh man! And there had been um, two more previous to that in a pretty short, um, you know. So that stability is yeah. is huge. Yeah. You yeah. know, you you get that established communication mm-hmm. kind of set through the season and preseason, and then the next year you have to do it all over again. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, makes it tough. For sure. And then what what division are you guys now? Uh, for basketball, we're three yeah. A. 3A, okay. Yeah, okay. 2A football, 3A basketball. I don't know why that's always been that way. Okay. So, so who um, are you playing against? For me, it's kind of different because we were 4A before, so we're competing against these schools when we go to the playoffs, 1,500, 1,600 kids. Holy smokes, yeah. Um, so we're where, where we need to be. I, I think it gives us a great opportunity to have a, a good run. The teams that we play, as you go down the list, you know, we have the Rifles, the Gunnisons, Olathe's, Grand Valley. Mm-hmm. Um, Delta's in the mix with us now, so gotcha. there's some teams nice. that have moved down that are strong. Okay. Um, you know, as you get into the playoffs, then now you start to face like some of the private schools that are oh, yeah. solid. Oh, so it yeah. doesn't get any easier than playing up in mm-hmm. the next division. Mm-hmm. Um, if you look at football right now, 
Our kids have done a great job. They beat everybody that they played that was a 3A school. But in 2A, if you look at the competitiveness of, of the league that we're in, yeah. you have Rifle number one in the state. Delta's number two in the state. Basalt is in the top seven, I think. Aspen is like number 12. Wow. So that speaks to the caliber of athletes that we have in our league. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, we've got our work cut out for us. You, you, you really can't look past anybody. Right, right. Yeah, those private schools. I remember when Parker was playing golf at Valor Christian. Holy smokes. Yeah, there you <laughs> those go. Those guys were good. Yeah. You know, so and one of them's on the tour now, on the it, PGA Tour. I think Mark will speak to it a little bit on private schools. We talk about it often. I mean, we went this summer. Go ahead, Mark. Tell them about where we went this summer and what that school was like. Uh, yeah, we, um, well, I, I had played, we played when I coached uh, before in 2014, the team that we took to the state tournament. Um, there was two public schools uh, out of the grade eight. Um, the other six were private, private. schools. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, us and Brush, uh, and uh, we the first thing that we played was a, a school, um, Colorado Academy. Mm-hmm. Um, they currently have at, off that team that, that we played against. They have a kid that's the starting point guard at Harvard. Oh my gosh! Um, they have a kid that's playing at Colorado Christian University as the starting point guard there. Wow! Um, so uh, you know, tremendous athletes. We played. Uh, um, summer camp there this year uh and they have a completely separate athletic um, facility five basketball courts wow Um, yeah it's uh it's a it's a gated um college campus is what i call it because it's a a gated high school um the the cost to attend that high school is twenty three thousand dollars a year Holy oh, smoke. Pocket yeah. change. Yeah. 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 That's right. Yeah. chasing down. Their it's, training it's room the has an X ray. Uh, private school in Colorado. Oh my it's it's seven thousand dollars more than Valor Christian a year to go to the Colorado Academy. Wow. They have um, a weight yeah. room that and the Broncos we, would like to play. We also play. played at Valor Christian, yeah. which is an unbelievable campus. Right. Um, yeah. But just just blows you away at their facilities and um resources that they have readily available gosh an x-ray room and oh yeah they have their own radiology department in their training facility that's amazing so hey i mean that's that's a a step up yeah you know so we're going to have to be ready if we're fortunate this is what my dad always told me when we'd go to rodeos just because they got a nice rig doesn't mean they're going to walk away number one. That's right. Mm-hmm. Looks don't buy you anything. So that's true. There you go. Very true. Yeah. That's my dad used to say a little different. Son, they all put their pants on the same way, yep, one exact- leg at a time. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 Exactly. So we're, we look forward to the challenge. We'd like to give a big shout out to ENL Science for being our sponsor of this podcast. ENL Signs serves Western Colorado and Eastern Utah for all your screen printing and vehicle lettering needs. With over 30 years experience, Ed Moore will get it done for you. So remember, ENL Signs. What do you think is the biggest struggle for the kids to overcome? As far as this year goes? Yeah. And just in It'll, general with the with the whole package, what's what's going to be kind of their... Well, I, I think... You know, we're, we're taking over a program where we have seniors that have never been to a district tournament. Okay, they've Gosh. never made the playoffs. Mm. So for us, and what we've worked hard is building that culture where the biggest thing for them is learning and understanding the level at which we expect them to work versus where they are right now, I think. And they've know, never made it because they just didn't try hard enough just to apply themselves? Well, or just the rest of the team You know, I, I, never, I never try to look back and evaluate why from a coach's standpoint or a player's standpoint. Just kind of a but, Todd Helton thing. Yeah, I mean, for whatever reasons, they haven't made it. And, right. and at the end of the day, I think as a player, you have to look in the mirror and say, did I give it everything I had right. to give? Yeah, right. You know, a coach can do so much, but at the end of the day, those players have to step on the floor. Mm-hmm. And they have to execute. And and we talk a lot about the New England Patriots. And if mm-hmm. anybody watched the game last night, they talked a lot about how those coaches prepare. 
mm-hmm. how they pay attention to the little things. Right. And if we can teach our, our players the distinction of pay attention to the details, right. the little things will make right. a difference. Um, so I was kind of giving them a hard time to try to drive the point home. We were working a shooting drill, and they were half-heartedly going through the drill. So I stopped and I said, okay, guys, I got a question for you. Do you know where you ended up in the state rankings for 3A basketball last year? They all shook their head no. None of them had an idea. I said, do you realize you ended in the top 10? Now looked at me. Coach Willie won six games. We weren't top 10. I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. You were number five out of the top 10 of the bottom 10 of the league. So the little things yeah, will make a difference of right. where we go with this program. That's right. And our point is this. Hey, let's just look at it this way. Nowhere to go but up. Right. So yeah, let's, let's right. have fun with it. Go bigger, go bigger. Let's celebrate the victories. Let's win and learn. Not mm-hmm. win and lose. Let's win and learn. That's mm-hmm. going to be my philosophy of how we go into this program and where we take them. And I'm only as good as the coaches around me. And mm-hmm. the players around me, and I'm I'm blessed to have Mark with me in this journey. Right. Um, there's no ego about it. We we just love getting after it. So, I think that's the biggest thing is and you guys how we establish, kids, yeah, which is awesome. So uh, that was a long winded answer for. I think mm-hmm. I think the hardest thing is let go of what you used to be mm-hmm. and be an open book to a new chapter. Mm-hmm. Right. And I have that, like I have that sign and my mom's always reminding me, you know, don't look back. You're not going that way. Look forward, you know, Mm -hmm. and it is, it's hard to, sometimes you have certain things in your mind of what happened and you can't let that go, but it is important to to work to let that go and look forward that, yeah, I'm going to be better than I was yesterday and, or last week or last year when we were in the top five of the bottom 10, this, you know, this year we'll be in the top five of the top 10. And And that's our goal. It's doable. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we're stepping into this and, you know, Mark and I are looking to say, what do we got to do to win this thing this year? Right, exactly. Yeah. Uh, let's let's set our standard right, not how do we finish second, how do we finish third. No. We're going to do what we have right. to do to be competitive and right. see where it takes us. Right. I think that's true with Dave Ulrich, too. I, uh, The superintendent, I always like his outlook on things as far as, okay, what do we do to make this happen? Not, yeah, gosh, it'd be great if we could get second or if we could get this or that. He's right. like, what do we do to make this happen? And mm-hmm. it's good that you guys have that same vision. Sure. What do you have to add to that there, Coach? <sighs> Nothing. What? You nailed it on, I mean, you nailed it on the head. It's, you know, I mean, the, the commitment, teaching these boys, you know, um, what it takes to to build what we're trying to build, you know, to see the vision the same way that we do. Right. Um, it, it was easy. You know, I, I go back to bags a lot because they win a lot. They have a, a good culture and, and, and community um so you know myself growing up it was easy it was do it or don't right you know if, if you wanted to win this is what this is what yep. you did mm-hmm. not you everyone gets a ribbon part of it. Mm-hmm. not everyone gets um, a ribbon and and not everybody gets a trophy yeah there's no participation trophies takes. thank you um and and uh this is what it takes to win this is how we do it they had a good formula for it, um, and I'm better because of it. Um, yep. You know, it was, and and I just try to take what I learned from here and apply it to, to when I coach. Right. Um, so. And I like what yeah. you touched on leadership because I feel like as a high schooler, I didn't see it. But this is like high school is the foundation. Mm-hmm. Right. And even just basketball being having that awesome coach in that foundation is maybe setting you up to be a CEO of a company. Right. right. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And right. I hope kids realize that. I really right. do. I know Oscar always told Parker that that high school, this is like the best time of your life. Enjoy it, you know, work it. Right. You know, it's just well, it's a lot. I, I'll build a lot of my foundation off of a business owner. Right. Yep. You know, yep. you run a tremendous business because you have great processes. Right. And you find the formulas that work and you stick to them, fine tune them and tweak them as, as we progress. That's right. And I, I really believe as a coach, that's the same thing. Yep. We're, we're going to build great processes. We're going to be consistent with our processes. Uh, it's not about the most intricate offense or defense. It's about 
I'm just going to be better than you at what we do. Right. And if we take on that mentality of execution, good things will happen. Yep. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. What uh, kind of advice do you have for new kids and or new students and parents for getting involved in either the program yeah. or the school? What What can they do? Number one, stay tuned. Uh, kids, just pay attention to what's going on with the announcements. Mm-hmm. Parents, plug into the athletic schedules. We want kids to come out and and participate. Right. You know, I was telling Mark, I wish there was a way I could figure out. Uh, I hate the word cut. I mean, yeah, sure. We could go to the Michael Jordan story, but you know, as a parent, be supportive of your child, encouraging them to go out and compete. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Um, and especially in a program like this, we want those kids that may not make the cut because you got to figure out how to go from forty-five. We were just talking about this in our coaches' meeting. What's what's that number when you start thinking about grades, injuries, putting everything in the proper perspective? It's twenty-eight to thirty kids, I think, is the number. Right. How do how do you make that work? But those kids, what about thirty to forty-five? Maybe that is that freshman that by his senior year could be all state. So we yep. want them back. Right. We want them in the off-season workouts. We want them in the weight room with us. We want them to know that. No doesn't mean you're not good enough to come back and continue right. to try. So that's life lesson number one, isn't it? Yep, mm-hmm. it is. Um, yep. But it doesn't get taught enough. Right. right. You're it not, doesn't. Not I anymore. may not be good yeah. at real estate, but I may be good at selling cars. That's right. Yep. That's and right. We all have our place. So that's, that's what we'll work hard at is, hey, here's what we think you need to work at. Here's right. how we're going to try to help you to, to improve. Because we were talking about this at dinner. How do we touch every kid in the... I mean, we start November 18th, and de- December 5th, we're on the floor. We're competing. Wow. So how much do we have to put in in that limited time span? Well, and that's kind of the kids. Step up. Yep. Yeah. Bring it because yeah. so, bring your best game. Yeah. Um, that's the message that I would send to the parents and the kids. Uh, you never know if you're good enough if you don't come out and try. That's right. And I think that's the biggest pain of all. If I have to look back and say, I wish I would have. Something's wrong. Yeah. We're missing the boat. Yeah. Yep. Come out yep. and give it a try. Yeah. So. Yeah, exactly. What is the one thing, we'll ask this of each of you, but what is the one thing you do every morning that sets yourself for success for that day? Like a habit that you have, whether it's meditation or just uh, yoga or shoot hoops for five minutes before you drink a bunch of coffee or prayer or whatever. What mm-hmm. is the one thing that you consistently do? I'll let Mark go first. Okay, Mark, you go first. Um, it's uh, kind of something that I started doing um, now that my boys are getting more um, into athletics and getting more competitive and, and getting up there. But um, usually, typically, um, I, I try to do it every day. But um, I try to find some sort of you know inspirational quote or um, mm-hmm. you know a good quote from a coach or something that I hear, um, and I'll send it to them on their phones. Oh, that's, um, that's nice. You know, think about it, you know, uh, ponder it, you know, then we talk about it, you know, when we get home, um, how they can apply it to, to basketball, to their life, to, you know, um, because, you know, like you said, that we got a short period to try to grow, you know, good young men that, that can go out and be CEOs and things like that. So, you know, um, that's something I started doing recently. I don't do any i got to get up too early to, you know, meditate and drink coffee, so. Yeah, um, yeah, exactly. Uh, well, and sometimes so, yeah. it's just a matter of saying, okay, it's going to be a great day today. That's what I do. I mm-hmm. wake up in the morning and go, now I'm started meditating because Parker thinks I need to for stress. But um, I say, it's going to be a great day today. That's just always what I say before I open my eyes in my head. And, and I love your idea about the quotes sending that. That's awesome. We're so much alike, it's not even funny. And that's that's why we're such a, a good combination uh, as coaches that excites me so much. That's great. Um, because I, I think it is. The power of the mind is is unbelievable. I think we would yep. all agree to that. Yep. Um, I am, I mean, my Lord and Savior is first in my life for sure. Sure. And so I always have those conversations throughout the day. But being able to, to wake up and be thankful for the things that we are blessed with in, in my life. To, because at my age, you know what? I'm very thankful to have the opportunity to come back and coach again. Right. Um, 
I don't want to sound ancient, but still. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm thankful for that, and I take it very seriously. But to yeah. be able to say, okay, the power of the mind, the positive outlook in life, um, I have shelves and shelves and shelves of motivational books that I would read consistently. Have you read The more. Secret? Yes. Is it not the best the, book? It's a wonderful book, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. I give it message. to everybody. Yes. I yeah. give it to, if you have not read The Secret... Yeah, you got to read it. Because I'll read it again and I'll pick something else up. I'll read yeah. it again and it's yeah. just, it's amazing. Yeah. And there's just so many good books that you can read. Uh, yeah, just, exactly. Uh, to go on and on. But that's where I am, you know. And mm -hmm. then to be able to walk in the gym at 6 o'clock with a smile on your face and, and just mm -hmm. what's that message we're going to carry to the kids this morning and then right. move it forward. But right processing everything so that's that's huge getting off on the right foot and i'm not always yeah. the best at it my wife i better throw that in there so Teresa says you didn't tell the whole truth no. <laughs> right right so. Teresa might think that doesn't actually happen every day yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah i'm sure oscar would say the same thing yeah, yeah. but i try to you know yeah. it's important to me because you're right it when you get to the office or you get to the basketball court or whatever it's your attitude is conveyed to everybody else yep. and then they're like oh god she's in a terrible mood or mm -hmm. steve's had a bad day or whatever nope it's like, okay, let's yeah. knock it dead today, you know? So yeah. important. Yeah, it is. So what things have we not touched on that you want to you make sure we have got some exciting dates, don't yeah, you? Yeah, we've got some great dates that I want to share with you. Okay? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I'll, we'll give you an update. I'll let Mark talk a little bit about our fundraiser that got us off on the right foot and what's right. going on there. But as you go down our schedule, uh, two preseason tournaments, I tell everybody we're going to South America. <laughs> December 5th, we open in Satari, though, so it's just south of Alamosa by a million miles. Right. Um, <laughs> Two-year contract will be done with that. Hopefully next year we'll have a tournament here at that time. Okay. But as we go down the list, I'm cheating and looking at my notes. Yeah. Um, always fun, December 17th. We're going to renew the rivalry, even though Steamboat is a uh, 4A and we're 3A. Coach Vandal, myself, Mark, we have a great working relationship. We do summer HAB basketball together where we bring okay. the athletes together and go compete in Denver. Uh, appreciate the relationship that we have with Coach Vandal, but we're going to make December 17th a special date. We play in Steamboat. Good deal. So the Love. community better show Get up. Get up there. Yeah. Let's go to Steamboat and bring back that yep. yes. rivalry and, yes. and we'll compete. I mean, they're a great basketball team, mm. so it'll be a good test early on. But as you go down the list, um, December, no, excuse me, February 8th is the first date. February 8th, we play Aspen at home. That's a Saturday. Okay. Uh, one thing that I've been blessed with, and I tell people, I think it speaks to a program. When I left Colorado State and went and finished at Shadron, but Colorado State to this day invites me back every year for the CSU Legends game. Oh, that's nice. Um, so... I gave away the secret of what I wanted to make it sound like was my own idea. <laughs> but I just love the way they bring athletes together. Yeah. So February 8th is a Saturday. We play Aspen. And I think one of the one of the dying things that's not happening in schools enough is keeping your alumni in the fiber. Mm -hmm. yep. And that mm -hmm. tradition. And Moffat County's had a great tradition mm -hmm. of winning. Uh, so we're going to have our first Moffat County Legends reunion game. Oh, great. And so what's going to happen is um, hopefully some of you guys are watching and you can reach out to me either on Facebook or call me at Victory Motors or whatever. Yeah. But I'm trying to go collect as many former athletes as I can. We'll bring them back. We'll have a 12 o'clock get together with the guys before our game. I'll walk them through what we're doing with our program. Um we will then introduce all those guys. Hopefully we can have T-shirts made for all those guys that say MCHS Legends. Uh, thank them for coming back. I want to introduce every player. Uh, and That's then we'll have a get-together after our game, kind of a uh, whatever you want to call it, the mm -hmm. mixer celebration, mm -hmm. so that everybody can just get together and talk about old times and, and spend some time together. So I think February 8th is going to be a, oh, a special day. Oh, amazing, yeah. Uh, I hope it's not special for Aspen because we want to kick the tar out of them. <laughs> Don't we, Mark? Yes. Yes, definitely. <laughs> and then February 20th is, of course, our senior night. We'll play Coleridge and yes. leading into the district tournament. So those are some big dates for us on the schedule yeah. that we're looking forward to. Oh, that's really first, cool. First home game is December 14th. Is that correct? Uh, first home game is December 21st. 
21st. So 21st, we go we go home rifle, home against Gunnison, and home against Olathe. Okay. So we get out of the gate real quick with some good games gotcha. to set the tone of the season. So wow. it goes by fast. So It does. It um, does. But that's really cool. I love this Legends idea. That is really neat. Yeah, we're looking really forward neat. to it. So. Yeah, and your fundraiser was a good turnout. And Mark, go ahead and talk about uh, the fundraiser. Yeah, we um, we had some some great uh, sponsorships, uh, you included, Sandra. Thank you very much for that. Uh, you bet. King Homes and Land is always some, happy to some do awesome, that. Awesome donators, donators there. Um, we uh, we filled the the cafeteria auditorium area. Um, we we had a great dinner. Um, great. Uh, Dave Abdul um, prepared all that with Steve. Uh, I cut up a couple onions, so that's good. Like, <laughs> to, you know. He showed off his chopping skills. Okay, very good. Yeah, yeah. Um, but no, we had uh, we had thirty kids, um, shirt and tie serving, um, picking awesome. up plates, uh, meeting that's and awesome. greeting. You know the the people that bought tickets and supported our our program. Um, we. You know, then we, we put on a great comedy show. The, the comedian was, was fantastic. Uh, I, we, I think we estimated that we had 200, 250 people um, that showed up for that. Um, he put on an awesome 45-minute show. Uh, everybody had a good time. Yeah. Um, we raised a good amount of money. I don't know what the, the final total was, but um, it, was, it was just a, a really fun night. Rave reviews from everybody that attended. That's great. Um, thought, thought it would grow next year based on, on that. We did a, we also had a silent auction. Um, mm. A guy that, that Steve had met um, that helped out with the cancer drive this year mm -hmm. um, out of Las Vegas that owns a sports memorabilia uh, store down there. Um, left some stuff for us, some jerseys. Um, oh, nice. Cool. And uh, signed pictures and, and things like that. Um, we pretty much cleaned house with that. Uh, as well, so it, yeah, it was just a, a really good, fun event. Good deal. And then, what does the money go for that you raised that night? Well, a lot of things. Uh, so we were able to kind of update some of our basketball inventory, coaches' mm -hmm. boards. Um, we purchased all new practice gear because when we got there, uh, <laughs> we couldn't even outfit everybody in the same tops. Mm -hmm. so yeah. varsity would be looking pretty darn good and then it would just fall off like that tv commercial where the guy has the ragged collar looking and right yeah you yeah, look yeah. comfortable we had some guys look pretty comfortable mm -hmm. uh, yeah to put it in a nice way so let's bring so back that pride we've got some great looking practice gear it, it's under armor gear it's so nice oh nice that the tops are reversible but we we're able to buy shorts as well so everything great. we look like a team uh, but it's nice enough that we'll actually suit our freshman players up in this gear because it's better than the game gear that we have right now. Wow. So that's done. We're working on a few other things. New shirt, shooters shirts for the varsity players. And what does that mean, new shooters? So it's a warm-up shirt. So it's a oh, okay. hooded top that's, you know, kids like the bling. Oh, they yeah. want to look oh, sharp. Yeah. And yeah. quite frankly, we feel like if we come in the gym, you'll see us in shirt and tie a lot. Yeah. Or else yeah. in really nice travel gear. Yeah. And then when we step on the floor, we're going to look like we mean business. Good deal. And set the tone. Yeah. Uh, but it, it allows us then, we're looking at some other uniform combinations that we're trying to figure out how we can get that done. And That's cool. Uh, so it set us in a position where we raised enough money to pay for all the practice gear. Um, and we'll have money that we'll pay for all of our summer camps and hopefully a lot of the meals. So we take a lot of the so burden cool. off the kids That's great. during the summer and the parents, I should say, because we know yeah. we appreciate the parents' it's support. Tough. There's, there's a lot hard. of money that goes behind athletics. Yeah. yeah. So it, it's put us in a good position going forward where we can keep a pretty stable account and be respectful of how we fundraise. It was nice to be able to do something that I think offered a quality meal yep. and quality entertainment. For a pretty reasonable price is how we felt about it. So yeah. thank you to, for everybody that supported. Yeah, that's awesome. What you did was greatly appreciated. So well, thank you. Well, we appreciate what you're doing to help the kids. That means a lot to us. Yeah. You know, so. Well, thank you. Cool. Anything else we missed we need to hit on? Coach, what did we miss? We'll talk forever. You, you just make guys <laughs> shut up. No. 
just come out and support the Bulldogs. Uh, I think we're going to have a, you know, I mean, um, you know, from the Park and Rec up, uh, you know, Ryan and, and uh, Pike are doing a, a fantastic job with the Park and Rec program right now. Um, getting a lot of kids involved. Um, we just had a, uh, Steve and, and Jim Locker and just, just did a, a camp for the, the younger kids mm. getting ready to start their Parks and Rec seasons um, with basketball. Um, Very cool. But, but they're including, you know, Ryan's doing a, an awesome job of including the high school coaches and, and getting involvement. Um, we mm-hmm. got fantastic coaches at the junior high right, right. now. Um, you know, Derek and Derek Brand um, just took over the eighth grade position after Steve left. Okay. Um, and Sam Langle, he's a, a social studies teacher at the middle school, coached under Steve last year. Um, Coach Hoyt, uh, Luke Tucker is also helping down there. Great. Um, so just they have some really good, yeah. really good coaches at the junior high level. Um, we're, you know, everybody's on the same page, just trying to build the program and get 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 everything back going okay. strong again. So uh, <laughs> next thing is just uh, getting support, you know, getting people – Getting butts in the bleachers, you That's know, right. yeah. um, cheering these kids on. I think I think we're going to have a, an exciting season. I think we have a lot of you know um, committed committed kids that are that are ready to take the turn. Yep, that's um, great. The dominoes yeah. are, are set up. That's what's cool. Like Mark was saying, when we're able to go to lunch with our eighth grade co- and seventh grade coaches. Right. They're teaching the dialogue. They're teaching the basis of what we're going to run in high school um, to be able to be involved age. with the city mm-hmm. and to get to where there's some structure in that. That's how you build, for lack Teamwork. of better terms, dynasties, right? Right, exactly. Um, you build the program. You know, so mm-hmm. we're looking forward to it. So, awesome. And Mark, like Mark said, if we can get everybody just to show up. Yeah. Show up just and, and support the kids. That's, yeah. Show that you appreciate their hard work for the team you know we, we'll start with our lock-in on november 18th and then what would that be like the 21st 22nd or 22nd 23rd we'll lock in and that's where they hear the stories about well we paid we played thunder ridge and there was probably 2500 people in the gym wow. and it was just rock and loud and yeah uh, mark when they had the teams there during the playoffs gym is full yeah we want those high school kids to Come, come be loud. That's that's what yeah. we want. We yeah. want them to come be loud, have fun in a positive way that's uh, uplifting, mm-hmm. and uh, we'll do the rest. We'll do our part. That's great. Awesome. That's great. So, thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for coming on the podcast today. Thanks, Mark, for coming on the podcast today via iPhone. And hanging around up there. <laughs> yeah, and hanging around up there. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why we're all just staring. <laughs> yeah. yeah, people are going to see the video and be like, why do they keep looking up? <laughs> Mark's up there. Yeah, well, awesome. I appreciate you guys having us. This is awesome. Yeah, so. yeah. Thank you. All Thanks, right, guys. Thanks so much. Yeah, thank you. We'd like to give a big shout out to ENL Signs for being our sponsor of this podcast. ENL Signs serves Western Colorado and Eastern Utah for all your screen printing and vehicle lettering needs. With over thirty years' experience, Ed Moore will get it done for you. So remember, ENL Signs. If you like what you hear, please take time to review us on Apple Podcasts and make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss an episode. Also, if you'd like to be on the podcast, let us know, or if you have someone you would like us to feature, let us know that as well.